Meanwhile in Birmingham, Hi. Sorry. So, I've given the topic of Antarctica a lot of thought lately. Uh, not surprisingly, because I'm traveling there in February of 2017. For many of you, when you think of Antarctica, you think of ice, penguins, elephant seals. Uh, maybe you think of the first attempts to explore the place. However, some of you might think of climate change. There's been a lot of talk about Antarctica over the last decade in regards to climate change. We're talking about temperature measurements, sea level rise, and the reduction in ice shelves in Greenland and, and so Antarctica. So what's happening is temperatures increase, ice melts. Ice, the icebergs, and what's going on with global climate change. One of the most remote places on Earth could be a key to understanding climate change. Marine Antarctica and the Arctic in the north are regarded as bellwethers for climate change. But why? Well, polar environments, uh, in terms of their response to climate change, to being bellwethers, as you call them, um, are unique in the sense that they're very sensitive to small changes. This is Dr. McClintock, a veteran Antarctic researcher at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Think about an organism that has lived in Antarctica for millions of years at a very stable temperature. You've become adapted to variation in temperature that might be less than a degree in a given year. And then the ocean begins to warm. So you're encountering changes that are really outside your experience as an organism. So you may not have the tolerance level that you'd expect of an organism that sees hot summers and cold winters, for example. And we know from studying the marine life there, particularly invertebrates, um, are very sensitive to small incremental changes in temperature. So that's one of the reasons why Antarctica is such an amazing place to study climate change. The other thing is that the ice is melting. We've seen that in the Arctic, and now we're seeing it particularly on the Antarctic Peninsula where we work. So scientists looking to measure the rate and severity of these global changes head for the polar regions precisely because the changes are so much more pronounced there. That makes sense. And it's clear that climate change is worrying everyone. However, one particular side effect of climate change doesn't appear to be getting the attention that is warranted. We hear about melting glaciers, rising sea levels, species extinction, and about how Miami will soon be an underwater playground for fish. But what about ocean acidification? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ocean acidification? Yes, ocean acidification. So our oceans have sat at about a pH of 8.2. Um, and what's happened in the, since the onset of the Industrial Revolution, the oceans have absorbed enough carbon dioxide to reduce that pH to about an average of 8.1. What's the big deal? 8.2 to 8.1, who cares? But it turns out that pH, which is a measure of the hydrogen ions in water, is on a log scale. So if you remember from your basic math in high school, a log scale, you change the number a little bit, you have a huge difference. So going from 8.2 to 8.1 represents a 30% increase in the acidity of the oceans. Does that mean trouble for everybody? No. Some of the species seem to be able to cope with the reductions in pH, but others are having a tough time. Yep. Ocean acidification. Turns out it's a pretty disturbing side effect of climate change. So what are the basic mechanics of this process? The ocean, it turns out, is an important carbon sink which is to say that the ocean is a place where excess atmospheric carbon is naturally stored. An estimated 30 to 40 percent of carbon dioxide from human activity released into the atmosphere is dissolved into the oceans. That's a lot of carbon. Some of that carbon dioxide, once in the ocean, reacts with water, producing carbonic acid, which then reacts with more water, producing hydronium ions. And it's the hydronium that's the basis of the increase in ocean acidity. So the pH balance of the ocean has historically been about 8.2. And now, as a result of excess carbon dioxide being dissolved into the oceans, that balance is about 8.1. That's a lot more significant a change than it sounds. 
as Dr. McClintock pointed out. And as Dr. McClintock also points out, this ocean acidification business is bad news for some organisms, but not bad news for all organisms. However, the problem is getting worse. Subtle changes in acidity may not be noticeable at first, but as the acidity increases, more and more organisms will be affected. And the more acidic that the ocean gets, the greater the potential to crash or rearrange ocean ecosystems, especially in the polar regions. And remember, ocean acidity has already increased by 30% since the Industrial Revolution. So what can be done about this? How can we fix ocean acidification? But in the big picture, what we need to do is we need to lower our carbon footprint. And I wish I had good news about that. Um, I think we will. I think that, you know, 195 countries in Paris recently was not just, a, a, you know, something blowing by in the wind. I think that really means that the, the world's gonna deal with this ish issue, and I think we have to. My concern is that ocean acidification is not a zero-sum game in the sense that it may take 30 years to lower the pH a tenth of a point. It takes several thousand years for that CO2 to come back out of the water, basic chemistry. It takes a lot longer for the gas to be removed from the ocean than it is for the gas to be taken up, which is even more reason why we need to act and act soon to really significantly lower our carbon footprint. So obviously ocean acidification is a big problem and climate change in general is a huge issue. And since we'll be discussing Antarctica periodically in this space, climate change related topics are inevitably going to pop up. I didn't expect to be confronted with the issue of climate change in this way uh, by winning a surprise trip to the bottom of the planet, but that's what's happened. The Earth's polar regions and the climate transformations that we've been seeing are linked together. It's unavoidable. Anyway, I'll see you next week.